Hi, good morning. I'm Peter Bacher. I'm the Director of Properties here at Maine Audubon, and I'm coming to you during p and &E week. Uh, those of you who are Maine Audubon members uh, likely realize we typically have a p and &E day celebration, kind of a, an ice cream social for our members, where we gather around the peonies, have ice cream, have a band. Well, this is not a typical year, so I thought this year I'd give you a little bit of a virtual tour of the garden and give you a little bit of background that you may not be aware of as to how the gardens got here and a few uh, things about how we care for the peonies. Uh, first, I should say that those of you who are uh, main Audubon members and uh, are aware of our mission, uh, w one of our big focuses nowadays is to work on native plants, which form the basis of the uh, food web that supports uh, you know, insects, right up to birds and small mammals. Uh, peonies don't fall into that category. Peonies are not a native plant, um, but they have a special place here at Gilsland Farm because they're, they're a legacy plant. Um, the peonies here are at least 69 years old. And I, I tell you that because this farm was once owned by David Moulton. Uh, and David Moulton, back in the first half of the, 19th, of the 20th century, uh, grew hundreds of varieties of peonies and sold them all over the country. He died in 1951. So even 69 years later, if you go into some of the fields out here, you can see some of his old production beds. Now these peonies here, um, this was not one of his production beds. This area was created by volunteers at Maine Audubon some uh, volunteers, uh, very dedicated volunteers who really worked hard to do this. I can tell you it's hard work because I've dug some of these from the field and when you dig a 70-year-old you know, plant it's got a big root ball on it. Uh, but they moved all these up here, made seven rows of peonies um, and made this more of the formal garden. So although you'll find some off in the field, they won't flower like this because these get great sun and we also put down a light dusting of uh, compost each year. But peonies are a very popular garden plant because they're perfectly hardy for Maine. Uh, you know, they're reliable flower. Uh, they can take some abuse. There's not many plants that you could put out in a meadow here and leave them for 70 years and still have evidence of them. So they're, they're really a legacy from David Moulton. Um, he died in 1951, as I mentioned. His daughter and her husband, uh, Maurice Freeman and Ruth, Fre Ruth was his daughter, uh, donated the property to Maine Audubon in the mid-70s. And we preserve these gardens as a legacy to them. I mean, they're beautiful. It was his, his passion, his life's work. And we are, of course, very grateful to him and his family for providing us with this headquarters and sanctuary location. And of course, they're beautiful. If you grow these at home, typically you would put like a round metal hoop, kind of like half of a tomato hoop, to keep the heavy blooms from falling over. If you can see here, we have wires because we have long rows, so the wires help hold them up. It's not a perfect system, but it works pretty well. If you're going to grow these at home, you probably want some way of keeping them up. You can also do it with a string and a rope around it. But when they get a little bit of rain on them, they're going to tend to fall down with the weight. Um, one of the other things I thought I'd mention about them, because I think it's a common and enduring uh, sort of myth about peonies, is that they need ants to open the flower buds. And, uh, you know, sometimes you'll find a flower bud like this that's getting ready and, and there'll be ants crawling on it. But really what it is, it's a, an example of uh, mutualism. The ants come up because on the sepal of the plants, there's little uh, ducts that produce nectar. And the, and the ants feed on that. So you see ants scurrying all over the buds, but they're not required for it. The good part, and the thing that makes them a mutualistic relationship, is that their presence keeps away other insects that might feed on the flower head. So it's, it's a kind of a win-win type situation, and, um, but they're not strictly necessary for the peonies to flower. As I mentioned earlier, peonies are kind of a, uh, a carefree plant in a lot of ways. They're very tough and durable, but we still like to perform some maintenance so they can look their best. Um, to a large part, 
if you've planted them in good soil, that drains. They don't like wet feet, so it has to be a draining soil and a, and a reasonably good soil. We try and keep the weeds and other competition out. Uh, that just strengthens the plant. Um, we also, in the, uh, it varies depending on our schedule, but when we can, put a light dusting of compost on. It's just a natural method of uh, letting the organic material work itself down, as it would in nature from the um, decay of leaves and other things like that. The, one of the things that I, I should note about when the uh, volunteers move these, and I think that was back in, I, I talked to a gardener, and I believe that was in the uh, mid-1980s. Uh, one of the things that they had to look out for, and that you do have to be careful about with peonies, and there's not a lot to be careful about, but if you give them good sun and reasonable uh, water and soil, they'll do fine. But the one thing you have to be careful of is not to plant them too deep. Uh, typically, if you buy it from a nursery, it's going to be in a pot and you can plant it at that level and feel comfortable that you're going to be okay. But when you transplant them and the soil's falling off here and there, it is very important that you get the level right. Otherwise, you can get a whole lot of leaves and very few flowers. And kind of that sweet spot is to have the eyes, the little red shoots that you find at the base there, uh, have them one to two inches below grade. Most of these are whites and pinks. There are some reds. I noticed a few years ago that we were short on reds, so I dug, I tagged some that I saw in the wild field down there so that I could dig them in the fall. I would know which ones to dig and brought up. So now we have a few more reds here, but this is the primary assortment. If you do visit, I would ask that, you know, we're trying to run it like a supermarket aisle, that you kind of go in the aisle one way and out the other end and that way we don't have to worry about people crossing and such like that. Kind of to wrap up a little bit, um, peonies are a lovely plant, but we like to maintain them as a memorial and a, and a legacy uh, of David Edward Moulton and his family. Um, so I'm often reminded of him and that's why I give you that brief background of him and uh, show you some of his work, which we still enjoy today.